All right, so I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of obsessed with the generative fill feature in Adobe Photoshop beta. Uh, I released two videos so far on this subject as of now. The first one was released the day that Adobe announced uh, generative fill and made it available via the beta version of Photoshop. And then the second one was uh, using generative fill to take your photos and convert them into different art mediums like uh, oil paintings and watercolor uh, and colored pencil. For this video, I want to get a bit more focused, so to speak, and I want to show you three different ways where generative fill can help either improve or even fix or even kind of resurrect wildlife photos, specifically wildlife photos. Um, and I think these examples will kind of, if you were kind of on the fence about using generative fill, I think these might kind of push you over the edge, these examples, uh, to giving it a shot. I highly recommend it. You know, you don't have to worry. Like, this isn't so much about taking a blank canvas and creating a whole new photo. This is taking the photos you already took. You went to the location with your camera. You press the button uh, and you got the photo. But now you just want to either uh, improve on it or you want to fix something due to a compositional error on your part or in this case, in my part. So let's just dive right in. Now, as I mentioned, the generative fill feature is currently only available in the beta version of Photoshop. Uh, if you try to use the regular version of Photoshop or sometimes referred to as the production version, um, you won't see it. Hopefully they'll make it available probably when the Adobe Max conference happens later this year. That's typically when they uh, make those kind of big additions uh, to their apps. But if you don't currently have the Photoshop beta installed, obviously you need a valid Creative Cloud license. And then you just need to go to the Creative Cloud app here under the uh, apps tab. You'll go to beta apps and you'll make sure that Photoshop beta is installed. But first, a quick public service announcement, especially for one of my closest friends, Blake Rudis from F64 Academy, who makes his own uh, Photoshop panels. Do not expect any panels or extensions or presets that you've purchased for Photoshop to work in beta. Assume that they won't. Remember, betas are like these sandboxes. You know, you, you it's meant to kind of play around and where things are expected to break. So please do not email developers who make these production grade presets and panels and extensions and ask them why it doesn't work in Photoshop beta because they're under no obligation for it to work in beta. It's a different story if it doesn't work in the production version of Photoshop, by all means, you know, email their support. But for now, just assume that if you need any of those panels for your production work, you're gonna be using Photoshop production. Now, the great thing is you can have the production version of Photoshop and the beta version installed in parallel and you can use them at the same time. So it's no big deal, but just, um, I know developers, they get overwhelmed, especially when a new feature in beta comes out and everyone's asking, why isn't your panel visible in beta? They're no, under no obligation to do it. So Blake, I hope that makes you happy. Let's move on. All right, so as you can see with this photo, the bird is in flight and I was hand holding my camera for all three of these photos. And you can see that overall, I'm actually quite happy with the shot. Even if I left it as is, I'd be happy with the photo. I love the angle of the bird. The only thing is, is that I kind of would, when I look at this photo, I almost want to have more of a sense of symmetry. Because the bird is weighed more towards the right third, right half of the composition, it kind of feels unbalanced. Unfortunately, there's actually a super easy way to fix this using generative fill in Photoshop beta. The way we're going to do it is we're going to take the rectangular marquee tool over here, and I'm just gonna make a selection to the left of the uh, wing of the bird here. And I'm gonna bring it like this. Now, you see that little uh, resolution box over there, the width and height black and white box? I'm only focused on the width value. And there it shows 2534 pixels. For simplicity's sake, I'm gonna round down to 2500 pixels. So we made the selection, but we don't need it. So I'm gonna press Command D or Control D on Windows to deselect. Now what I'll do is I'm gonna to go to image and then go to canvas size. And this is where we can expand or extend the canvas. You have this anchor section here and you can control whether you want to extend the canvas on one side to the left or the right, top or the bottom or diagonals. 
I want to extend the canvas to the right. To do that, I'm going to click. It's kind of, it might be a little counterintuitive, but you click on the left arrow and anywhere that's blank, that indicates where the canvas will extend to. Now, remember, we said we want to extend the canvas by 2,500 pixels. Now, you could grab your calculator, you know, your old uh, Texas Instruments calculator or your calculator app on your phone, but there's actually an easier way to do that. You can just take this value here, and I don't know if you knew this, but you can use uh, mathematical symbols like plus and then type in 2,500, and that works just fine. And I'll click OK. And now you can see that we have extended the canvas by 2,500 pixels. And now to use generative fill to kind of fill that new extended area, still with the rectangular marquee tool, I'm gonna to make a selection and I'm gonna ensure that part of the selection has the original composition in it and then bring it out here. Then I'm gonna click on generative fill. And normally what you could do is you can type in some sort of a text phrase for uh, the uh, Adobe Firefly AI model to generate something. If you leave it blank, it's just gonna infer that you want to kind of extend or fill or replace whatever is in the selection. And so I'm gonna click generate. Now, to save time, I'm just gonna skip through the processing. Normally it takes about, I would say eight to 12 seconds on my computer. I have a, an Apple M2 Max 16 inch uh, MacBook Pro with 64 gigs of RAM. So for that kind of a computer, um, I get about, yeah, 10 seconds or so to generate. Uh, so I'm gonna cut that out now, but I'm gonna click generate. And you'll see over here, first it, it filled in uh, the, the area. And if I click through, I have these other options. That's actually not bad. That's actually not bad either, actually. I kind of like that too. Now here's the thing. If you want additional options, we can go ahead and click generate again. And you'll see now that we have another three. Every time you click generate, it, the Firefly AI model will generate three additional options here. And so you can find one that looks good. That actually looks really good too. So we now have, as you can see, we now have this kind of, it's more of an aggressive panel look. The, the bird is centered. We can of course refine it with the crop tool and we can you know crop it in a little bit, but because we use generative fill, we were able to extend the canvas seamlessly. Now, there's a really important point that I wanna make. Whenever you use generative fill, it currently is limited to a maximum resolution of 1,024 pixels on the long end. So anything that you fill that's longer than that, so in this case here, if you remember, we filled about, it was 2,500 pixels plus another maybe 15 pixels from the original canvas in our selection. It'll still fill that, but it will stretch it. If we were filling something that was an actual subject, like we were including something like an object and that object in the selection was greater than 1,024 pixels, upon scrutiny, you would start to see kind of a, a, a lower resolution. It would look a little bit pixelated. But when we look here at the image, because the selection is out of focus, like if we zoom in, you can see like as we pan over, it's quite seamless. And even though this area is lower resolution, because it's out of focus, the eye doesn't really even see it. I mean, it looks quite convincing. The, the, the seam is somewhere right around here, if I remember correctly, um, or maybe a little bit over, but I mean, without knowing, I, I would kind of challenge you to tell me where the seam is. So because we're filling an area that's out of focus, that kind of max 1024 pixel resolution on the long end, it doesn't really affect us much. So this is the first example here of using generative fill to um, extend the canvas so that it, it kind of looks even more interesting. Like to me, this looks so cool. So let's move on. We have this second example here. Again, uh, bird in flight and this one is a bit more straightforward and it's, there are other ways to address this. This is distraction removal. So again, I mentioned that I went to this kind of uh, this is a, a wetland preservation area and they have all of these structures around, you know, with little kind of museum areas, but the building while it's in the background, uh, it kind of gives a sense of place that I don't want. 
Um, it, it tells you that you are in kind of a somewhat, so to speak, of a man-made area. And I want to preserve more of a natural feel. So we can use generative fill just like before, except last time we used it to extend a canvas. We created kind of something out of nothing. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to use generative fill to kind of infer um, just more trees and kind of more of these branches and leaves. And this is super easy. All you need to do, you can use either a pen tool or you can use any of the selection tools here. And I'm just going to make a selection right there. And just like before, I'm going to press generative fill and then click generate. And so you can see here, we have some really nice examples of, of how that building was removed and the background was replaced. Now I already have, um, I'm going to disable this one. I have a selection that I like. I, I did this before where I was kind of testing it out and I, I really like this selection. So my point here is we were able to very easily uh, use generative fill to get rid of a uh, distraction. And again, there are other tools, um, you know, kind of object removal tools and healing brushes and stuff that, that are actually quite good. But for the purposes of this, um, I find generative fill to be good. It's especially good at removing, for example, you know, people in backgrounds. And uh, if you're in a crowded area, it's, it's really good because not only does it remove the, the distraction, but it extrapolates the surrounding areas and fills it in. Now, super quickly before we jump into the third example, I used one of my color grade presets in all three of these photos. Uh, these color grade presets, there are 15 Adobe presets and 15 LUTs that you can use in apps like On One. Uh, Photo Raw and Skylum Luminar Neo, any other apps that support LUTs. But these color grade presets were built to add kind of a tasteful, stylistic color grade, so to speak, to your photos. Um, they're not over the top. They're not like weird cyberpunk looks. They're just meant to give a little bit of a different taste to your photos. They work fantastic on landscape, on wildlife, on urban photos, and even on portrait photos. So uh, if you are interested, I've got a link in the description below. Your purchases directly help support my small business, helps me make these videos for you, and I am super grateful for your support. Thanks a lot. All right, let's move on to the third example. This, I think, is something that a lot of wildlife photographers can empathize with. Uh, when you're photographing animals in motion, uh, you know, this bird here was flying and I was trying to keep up with it, but... In this particular case, I, I do have other images where the bird is, um, where I have the whole bird with its beak in the frame, but let's just assume that this was the only viable shot you got in the sequence of the bird flying. And unfortunately, um, the bird's beak is cut off on the right side of the frame. So what can we do here? Well, um, we can do a few things. The first thing we can do is Again, we do need to extend the canvas, but there's, I showed you the first way of, of using the uh, canvas size. You can also take the crop tool. To get to the crop tool, you just need to press C on your keyboard. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this right bumper and I'm gonna extend it basically to a, a length where I would think the beak, the length of the beak would be covered plus a little bit extra of the background. So somewhere right around there. Basically the beak would probably kind of come right around here. Um, and then there would be a little bit more of the background. So let's click the check mark to commit that. Now, just like before, I'm gonna take the rectangular marquee tool and with my selection, I'm gonna cover a bit of the original composition where we get the beak. See, that's all I'm getting there. And then I'm gonna press generative fill and then click generate without any text entry. All right, so here, first notice two things. First, the generative fill model actually extended the beak but also it extended the canvas. So like it didn't just bring the beak all the way through to the end of the canvas. That's super powerful. Um, so this first option, the beak is okay. Uh, the second option is actually not bad at all. Uh, I kind of like it. And then the third option is okay. So let's just click generate one more time to see if we get some other options here. That one's not bad. That's okay. So right now I'm kind of torn between this one and that one, um, I think I'll just stick with this one just for the sake of moving things along. 
Um, so, so you can see here that we've kind of resurrected or recovered an image that otherwise would have been uh, headed for the trash bin. Like upon quick scrutiny, you would never tell, never. I mean, I, I don't think anyone just looking at this right now, or especially if we zoomed out to like, you know, an Instagram size share, no one would ever, ever know. And again, I'm not debating the morality of this. I'm not gonna go to, for example, Reuters um, or the New York Times and push this as a photojournalistic photo because it's not. However, for my purposes, if this was the only photo that I got in this sequence here, I'm totally okay with using a little bit of generative fill to make it something that I can actually share. I got the photo, I got like 95% of the bird. And so I'm okay with just extending the beak a little bit. So don't beat yourself up over this. Don't think you're any less of a photographer if you use it. I fully reject that line of thinking. I see no problem with this whatsoever, so long as you're not trying to push this as uh, like an unedited, original, photojournalistic shot. So that's my kind of two second soapbox there. Now to finish this off, because the bird is still very close to the photo, um, what I can do is I can do ex exactly what I did before in the first example. I can go to image canvas size here, and let's just add another, uh, you know, 2000 pixels. And just like before, I'll go ahead and I will use generative fill to fill that in. And, and look at that. I mean, <laughs> this is so, so cool. Like any one of these is totally fine. Um, you know, I might use maybe this one or it doesn't really matter. Point is that you can keep generating until you find a suitable extension. But I mentioned Instagram, so now if I want, I can go back to the crop tool, you know, go to a one-to-one -one square, and then recompose the photo so that I have my, my shot ready for, for Instagram. You know, now I have my, my square shot. To me, I, I would never look at this and say, oh, yeah, that beak was, was generated and, you know, the, the background was extended. That's how convincing this is, and remember, most people are gonna be looking at these photos uh, on their phones or maybe their iPads or even on their computer, but they're not gonna be, it's not gonna be up for scrutiny. Um, this is just something that for me, if I really was excited about this photo and something small like the beak being cut off pre would prevent me from sharing it, I am totally cool with using generative fill. So I hope these examples kind of get you excited and open you up and maybe even push you over the fence to using generative fill in Photoshop beta, it, it's, it's not scary. It's not, it's not a bad thing. It's not gonna make you less of a photographer. It's just something that I think is important for you to understand how to use, what its capabilities are, and then you can make an informed decision as to whether it kind of fits within your toolkit, your editing workflow. Now, if you wanna learn even more about generative fill, I've got these two videos here, like I mentioned, the first one goes over the basics of generative fill, and the other one shows you how you can use generative fill to convert photos to different art forms. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed, I'd love it if you click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon to get notified of future videos. Thanks a lot.